everyone, Chan Foster here. Um, I was just sitting here praying. I was just sitting before the Lord. And uh, just really praying about a, um, a message that I'm going to have to share with some uh, troubled teens um, at a camp here uh, this next Tuesday. And um, I had a pretty good idea what I wanted to talk about. But the Lord, I feel like He wanted me to share this with you all. And then additionally, He gave me a personal word. For someone and I'm not really sure who that is I mean it could be you <laughs> uh, I didn't feel like it was for me uh, because I, I don't feel this way um, but the theme of this sorry if I'm shaky soon enough soon enough the Lord will provide a cameraman <laughs> and hopefully a babysitter along with it <laughs> but um, I felt like I really needed to share about my favorite chef and I don't know how many of you are familiar with Mephibosheth. Um, he was part of Saul's uh, family. He was actually Jonathan's son. But um, when they were uh, raiding the town, uh, his nanny uh, was afraid that they were going to kill him. So uh, the Bible says that she grabbed him and she took off running. But when she took off running with him to protect his life, she accidentally dropped him. And broke his legs and from that day on he was left uh, lame so he wasn't born lame but because somebody tried to get him out of a situation he ended up lame um, and the word and that the Lord gave me was um was this uh, the word the Lord said just because they dropped you don't mean your damaged goods to me to the world you may be damaged but to me you are beautiful and worthy to sit at the table and dine with the king, not as a servant, but as a prince or a princess. Worthy of honor and respect. You don't embarrass me. I'm not ashamed of you. I don't see limitations, but a beautiful masterpiece with many colors, shapes, curves, and angles. Perfection isn't uniformity, but originality of design. You are an original. You are not a copy, and I don't want you to be anyone other than who you are. Don't change for others, and don't change for me. Let me love you just the way you are, with all your, all your warts, all your wrinkles, all your scars and stretch marks. The marks are a sign that you've been in a battle, and have come out victorious. Don't give up now. The best is yet to come. And I will love you every step of the way. I love you today, yesterday, and forever. I don't change and neither does my love for you. Love, Abba. I'm not really sure um, who that word was for. Um, but I did feel very strongly that I had to share it. Um, I feel like some of you have been betrayed. Some of you have been um, misled. Um, some of you feel like you've been abandoned. You've been rejected. You've been dropped by people because you trusted them. And in the time where you needed them most, they betrayed you. They didn't come through for you. They misled you. You made sacrifices. You gave up things for them. And when you expected them to be there for you, they simply dropped you and left you damaged. And that has hurt you deeply. And because of that, you can't move on um, into what God has for you. Uh, many of you have even left the church because of it. Uh, because somebody dropped you. Because somebody lied to you. Because somebody misled you. Because somebody um, promised something and they did not come through. They used you, uh, they abused you, um, physically, emotionally, perhaps even sexually. And you feel like damaged goods. You feel like, well, God, I'm never going to be the same because this thing happened to me. Or, Lord, how can you use me? I'm damaged now. And perhaps you've even been ostracized by your family or by certain people um, in certain churches and in certain circles. But I just want to encourage you today that that's not the Lord's heart for you. He doesn't see you as damaged goods. He doesn't see you as somebody in need of 
surgery, plastic surgery, an implant or something to make you better. The Lord loves you where you are at today. And He doesn't want you to change your personality. He doesn't want you to change your quirks, your silliness, the way you are, the way you talk, the way you, you dress, the way you, you, you do things to please people and uh, to please Him. He made you that way. And um, I remember when I was younger, I would get really uncomfortable because, you know, everybody around me was so outgoing. They were so friendly. They were great at small talk and chit chat. And I was so embarrassed to talk to people. I was always so scared. I was always worried I was going to say the wrong thing and everybody was going to laugh at me. Or if somebody was telling a joke, I could never tell a joke because I was always so worried. What if I say it wrong? Or what if it's not funny and people just stare and I can literally hear crickets, crickets, you know? <laughs> so I was an extreme introvert. I mean, extremely introverted. During recess, I would just sit in a corner while all the other kids would play. I would just sit in a corner and just read a book, and the kids would just walk by me, and they would just look at me like, why is she doing that? Like, I was a very, very, very serious kid. And now uh, that I'm an adult, I'm actually very much the opposite. Yes, I have my moments of seriousness, but sometimes I seriously have to buckle down and be like, <clears throat> Okay, it's time to be serious now because anymore I have learned to so let go of uh, that being afraid um, that I have to be careful that I'm not the one smirking, you know, in the in the most um, um, worst of times, um, you know. <laughs> Because sometimes I, I'll, I'll see something, somebody will do something, or, or they'll say something, and I'll just be... <clears throat> trying so hard <clears throat> to be you know spiritual <laughs> uh, and and, and um, no, not in, in a fleshly way or anything that i would find things that are are bad you know funny um but you know i i i find humor in things and, and um i think it's good i think it's good uh that you learn to not take yourself so seriously even if people have done things to you, even if people have abused you, even if people have made you feel like you were not worth their time. And I've been there. Um, I've been there several times, you know. I didn't really grow up with a dad around much at all, so I felt as a teenager that I had to compensate with friends, with boyfriends, with all kinds of stuff. And later on, as an adult, with drugs and drinking and all kinds of destructive behaviors because I had a void. I didn't get that uh, reassurance as a child that I was worthy of love, worthy of respect, that I was beautiful, that I was uh, worth investing time into, and worth investing money into, worthy of somebody else's um, complete and undivided attention. I never, I never got that from anyone. Never, never. And it was not until I became an adult that the Lord had to heal me from those wounds of rejection and abandonment and you know um i guess it was really a a an orphanhood spirit that i had that i carried because i didn't have that um reassurance and that affirmation uh as a young girl uh, so that really messed me up in a lot of areas and so i kept messing with my hair it's like it won't stay <laughs> but i just want to reassure you today um just because people may not see your value does not mean that you're not valuable. You know, um, sometimes people don't see your value because they're not seeing you through the eyes of God. And many times, too, it's because people are damaged themselves and they're trying to push off their dysfunction onto you in order to deflect what they're going through so that they don't have to face uh, their own demons and they don't have to deal with their own situations and circumstances. You you will find that often too, that um, the ones that seem to cut others down the most are usually the ones that are hurting the most. The ones that are in some way, without knowing, screaming, yelling, crying out for someone to love them, to accept them, and to give them that um, assurance that they are worthy of love. But because they have not gotten it, they don't know how to give love and they don't know how to receive love. 
So I just want to make sure that you are not one of those uh, that believes a lie. That because you were abused, you were mistreated, you were taken for granted, that that meant there was something wrong with you. And uh, the thing that I have to say about that is that we are all broken. We're all flawed. We are all came from Adam. You know? We are not perfect. And um, as long as you expect someone else to meet your every need, you will always be disappointed. The only one who can meet your every need for love, for respect, for assurance, for identity is the Lord himself. You're not going to get that from a man or a woman or in any relationship. The Lord and the Lord alone is the only one who can feel that void inside of you and give you that identity that you so crave, that reassurance, that love, that um, self-worth. Amen. Make you feel protected, make you feel safe, make you feel loved and honored. So take heed today. The Lord loves you with an everlasting love. He's proud of you. He wants to do great things in your life. All you have to do is open your heart to Him. And though it might be hard for you today, Open your heart and trust, trust again. Because the Lord wants to heal you. I know not everybody out there is going to take advantage of you. But as long as you don't get healed, you're always going to be reactive. And you're always going to push people away before they ever get a chance to reject you. So get healed today. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. And I'm just going to pray for you real quick. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for everybody who's watching this right now. Father God, I thank you that you are a good father, that you don't change, Lord God. As your word says, though mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. The Lord will take care of me. The Lord will be my father. The Lord will be there for me every step of the way. And I thank you, Lord God, that you don't change, Lord. You're always the same. We can always know where we stand with you because you are always in the same place waiting for us with an arms wide open. You are the father to the prodigal who waits every day by the road for that child to come back home. So today, Father God, we're coming home back to you to receive our inheritance from you, Lord. We might have made mistakes. We might have believed lies about ourselves. So today we ask you, Lord God, that you would heal, that you would restore, that you would renew, Father God, the minds, the hearts, and the emotions of everyone who is watching, Father God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are the one who seeks out the deep things of their soul and you remove all the chains, all the yokes, Everything that is not of you, all the thorns, Father God, that have been sown in their hearts by the enemy. And I thank you today you crown them with your loving kindness. And you renew their youth so that they can leap and they can fly and they can soar on heights with you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for my brothers and sisters in this season. For that mighty breakthrough that you have for them and for those 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 new doors of opportunity and those new divine appointments. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, well, I love you. God bless you. And I will see you next time. Okay? Bye.